Hey everybody, it's Peter, and this is the Chevy Blazer Redline Edition. This is a vehicle with really great style, especially in person, and especially when you compare it to other vehicles in its class. But anytime a vehicle is styled pretty well, that makes me wonder about it, because a lot of those frumpy styled, kind of weird looking vehicles often are styled like that with function over fashion. When you go fashion over function, you can give up some function, and we're gonna see in this vehicle what it sacrifices to give it this great look and help you decide if that makes sense for you. The best thing about this vehicle is I'm filming it here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals, and at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals, you can compare this amongst a whole bunch of other brands, a whole bunch of other competitors in its class to decide if this is right for you. One of the things I'm gonna do in this video is try to show you a number of things that make this vehicle unique, and I'll try to show you things that other videos aren't showing you, so you can get a sense of what this vehicle is all about. So, let's start with the front. So I mentioned off the top that this is the red line edition. And what is the red line? Well, it's got some fancy red lines around the logo and purely by fluke, I lined up the red lines on the front wheel with the red lines on the rear wheel. It's got some red lines, but it's also got a lot of blacked out pieces and that really contributes to the style. So you can get these with blacked out roofs. I think on this white model, it doesn't really matter. It kind of has that nice kind of two-tone kind of look, but you can see on the front here, it's also a lot of blacked out stuff. In addition to just being blacked out and stylish out front though, it does have some functionality that really makes a difference in a modern car. Up here, you'd think those are thin little headlights. Those are not, those are just your LED daytime running lights. Now what's cool about that is they mount your headlights down low. Headlights have really changed over the last little while. So these ones are very, very bright and they have a sharp, sharp cutoff. So what happens with bright headlights with sharp cutoffs is if you make them with a sharp enough cutoff, they won't really distract many people, which means that this daytime running light is actually what is illuminating the road signs that are above the sharp cutoff. Now, the other reason for mounting headlights down low is because you really don't want to distract other people. And when you have a taller vehicle and you might mount a really bright headlight up here, it's more likely to cross into the view of other drivers. If you mount that headlight down low, you still get a great view of the road, but it's a little bit less in the, in the eyes of other drivers, which is why you're seeing more and more people, more and more manufacturers, excuse me, putting their headlights down lower. So sharp cutoff beam, bright light, LED lights here gives it some style, gives it some function. Down here, again, that blacked out look. You do have another function up there though. Just behind the mirror, there's a little V in the window and that is a camera looking forward. It's gonna give you some safety features, including forward collision avoidance. It's gonna have some lane keeping, lane safety type uh, systems that it watches the lane, makes it easier for you to drive, makes it safer. And like I said, that collision avoidance, it can see vehicles in front of you and it is capable of stopping to avoid the collision or at least slowing to minimize that collision if you weren't paying attention. Obviously you should never test that, but it is a nice safety feature to have on this Redline model. Let's go to the back and check out some things back there. Take a look at the back of this vehicle. You can see, again, nice clean lines. They bring that sort of diffuser type look up into here. So that would be that sort of sporty kind of look that you see in sportier cars. This isn't an actual diffuser here. That would be the wind area down here. What you see down here though is a trailer hitch. There are two models of this or two engines in this. It's a two liter turbo and there's a 3.6 liter V6. The two liter turbo is still plenty powerful, can still do some towing, but this one with the bigger V6 tows more. You can tow more weight, and in my opinion, it does it easier as well. So you have something that is a mid-size-ish uh, vehicle, not so compact, but it's still compact to drive, or at least feels compact to drive, that also gives you some real towing capacity, about 4,500 pounds, if I'm incorrect, I'll put it up on screen there, uh, which is up over the two liter turbo. Two liter turbo is great for fuel efficiency around town if you stay out of those turbos. I've towed with that two liter turbo in the past over distance and found that as a towing vehicle, it really doesn't get great mileage and that makes sense. It's basically to be used for occasional towing. But if you have a camper or something like that, you wanna do some real towing, uh, let's say it's a 3,500 pound uh, camper, you've got some extra room to tow that here with this package. So that's a nice thing to have. Then we'll talk about practicality. Before we talk about practicality, let me just show you the key because this is a power upgraded tailgate. Usually I show the key a little bit later in the video, but let's take a look at the key there. So pretty simple stuff here, lock and unlock. You have a remote start there. You have the double tap for the tailgate, which we'll do in a second, the panic button. And it's a nice thin little key from Chevrolet, it works really well. So we'll double tap it right there. And you can see that power tailgate. We're gonna show you another feature of that power tailgate when we go inside, but let's first look at the trunk of this vehicle. 
All right, so we're gonna do two different views of the trunk here today. First of all, this is the one compromise I think they're making for that sort of sleek lower, lower roof line. You still have a lot of space in here, and you can see there's pockets on the other side, like on either side of this center panel here. And then you have this uh, good size spare tire with a lot of underfloor storage there. A lot of, or some anyways, some SUVs have actually foregone the spare tire for an inflator kit. If you did that, you'd be able to lower this floor. And what's interesting is to create this space with that underfloor storage, when you put the seat forward and the seat does move forward, there is a gap there. Now that generally happens anytime you move those seats forward on a variety of vehicles, but there is a pronounced gap there. So you can see that I have moved the seat forward and tilted it upright, whereas this one I have put the seat all the way back and tilted it back. We're gonna leave those seats there for a second. When I jump in the rear seat, you'll see how comfortable they are and how they work well for me. But now let's show you either this side or that side uh, to show you a couple other little features. We'll probably go on from this side here to show you a few features in the trunk here. All right, a little bit of a busy shot here, but there's a few things I wanna show you. You can get a little cargo blind in here if you wanted to, that could cover your rear uh, luggage. I don't know that you'd need to. The windows are not that large in the area back here, although the, there is the large rear window. And then you have this to help you fold down the seats, which this one I can reach. I can reach the one that's close to me, but the other one I wouldn't be able to reach anyway. So the little handle to pull down that seat there. Then you have the LED light. It might look a little yellow to you, but it's very white in person. Then you have these cool little buttons. You press that in, and that is a little grocery bag here. So in a vehicle with a large trunk like this, if you buy apples or oranges or something like that and put them in a bag and they roll around, it's a pain to get them. So you have this little, little grocery hook right there, which folds down. You can put your grocery bags up there. And then you also have a 12 volt port back here, which is spring loaded. I can't hold it up there. Spring loaded like that. So you can uh, put your 12 volt. There's also tie downs back here and uh, three uh, across the rear seats. There are three uh, tether seats. So you can put your child seats anywhere you want them, but good practicality for what this is. So we're gonna jump in the back seat in a second, but before we do, while we're here on the outside, I just wanna show you a couple of little things. You can see those red lines on the uh, wheels there. They look pretty cool. Again, black wheels don't show up perfectly on camera. The Blazer logo here is black on the outside and red on the inside. Now, anytime you build this red line type addition, you're basically just rating, or at least GM is just rating their parts and accessories bin. So they do a couple things well and a couple things not as well. One of the things they do well is, you know, black logos, which is again, their accessory bin instead of that gold Chevrolet bow tie. That makes sense, right? Uh, practicality wise, you still have a roof rack up here and it is black as well. So instead of a silver roof rack that would be on other trim lines, uh, that low profile cross ra or rails there. So you just get the cross rails to put a top there. They do that well. One of the things they don't do well is apparently the buttons on the doors are only available in silver. So even though the doors are black, door handles are black, which matches the look, the buttons are silver and they do stand out because, and this is in the pro column, they actually give you a button on the rear door as well. So if you ever try to put stuff in the rear seat, you always have to, oh, you grab the handle, but then you have to go back over here to grab that handle. So it's nice to have them on all four doors. I would have loved to see them black, but hey, that's not the end of the world. All right, so it's gonna look like there is no leg room in this. And that's because again, remember, I moved that seat forward and tilted it up uh, compared to what it could be. So I'm gonna show you that this front driver's seat is adjusted for me. So it is something that fits me in the driver's seat. I'm gonna show you that I can get in here uh, by flipping the camera around right now and showing you what I've got. So let me just uh, show you what it's like of me getting in. All right, so really awkward view of me right now outside, but as I jump in here, you can see not a big deal to jump in. I can sit there with my legs there. I'm gonna close the door here to get a little more quiet. And headroom is good. What's not good when you have the seat like this is legroom. Legroom is very, very tight. And that's because I maximize the cargo space. So if you look over here, you can see there's that big gap between the two seats, the one that I'm in and the other one that is in its full back position. What I'm gonna do now is create that space here. So I'm gonna move this all the way back. Once I do that, I have very good, whoops, sorry about that, very good legroom here. The seats are still carved out. There's a pocket back here and I have good legroom. I'm a little tight on foot space if I had, um, or toe space, if I had work boots on compared to some others in the class. But you can see my size 11s have plenty of space and you don't really need to tuck your entire feet under that driver's seat because you have so much space back here. So I'm in the upright position. So you can see I'm about six feet tall sitting behind myself with tons of space back here. That all works very, very well. What is also impressive is sometimes when you do this, you tilt the seat back like this, sometimes the roof line curls back and you hit it. But even on this seemingly lower roof line vehicle, 
I've got tons of space here. I can just kind of relax even in the fully reclined position, which doesn't actually look as reclined on video as it is. It's pretty uh, nicely reclined. So this is where I would have it to sit uh, normally for me. And you can see headroom is very good. So overall seat comfort, pretty good back here. Let's just show you a few other features back here. All right, so I'm still on the left side of the vehicle, looking at the right side here. You've got nicely padded armrests here. So again, uh, just enough padding to have comfort. A lot of vehicles in a mid-level trim even won't have quite that much padding, so that's pretty good. Speakers down there, like I said, pockets in both doors. We're sh shooting in this in wide angle right now, so it's gonna skew the edges of the video a little bit. Uh, you do have your vents back here. They can open and close. They can be um, set up for whatever you need. And you have two USB ports, a USB, uh, a, sorry, A and C. Now the difference with those ports is they are probably on one circuit. So you're probably only gonna be able to charge one thing at a time with any kind of speed. There is a little space to stick phones down there if you need them. And again, like I said, in front of my knees here, good space here with that pocket there. So good overall space. I wouldn't say it's the top of the class, but it's still very, very, very good. So we're gonna leave the camera on wide angle as we approach the driver's seat here, and we'll jump in there. A couple things I really like, you do have powered seats with a powered lumbar right there. Again, I happen to like cloth seats. Not every cloth seat is super comfortable though. This has some nice different textures and that kind of thing, grippy. Uh, you know, I just kind of like it. I think it looks nice. Um, sometimes they don't look as nice. One of the things I wanna show you, let's just avoid the wide angle shot for a second. Here's a really cool feature. A lot of vehicles, if you go into a garage and open your power tailgate, you will hit your tailgate on the top. So this one is just super smart. You don't have to go into a menu system on the display screens or anything else. If you wanna keep it a little bit lower, when you open it in your garage, you can just top, tap that knob there and open that uh, trunk up. So it's just a really convenient spot to have it near the driver uh, to make sure that you're not crashing that thing into your uh, garage and you can just double check it before you get out of the car. Will you remember? Well, that's up to you, but at least it's easy to do. All right, so let's go fully wide angle again here for a second here as we jump in. Okay, so some things I love, some things I'm not sure about, but I don't know that they'll matter, matter to you. So this is the benefit of doing a video for you. I can tell you what I think of things and you can make up your mind if that matters to you. First thing, push button start like that. Press it up there, everything gets going. So GM's dash system, some would consider it dated compared to others. Uh, let me turn that radio down for a second, there we go. Uh, I find that it's very functional, it works very well. So we'll zoom in a little bit here. You've got the, a lot of analog gauges. Now most other competitors are gonna have, you know, electronic uh, fuel gauge and temperature gauge and sort of a digital display, that kind of thing. So you have a screen down here, which is very clear, works very well, uh, but you have a lot of analog gauges compared to competitors. I don't know whether that's gonna matter to most people, but it is something that uh, is there and you can decide if that works for you or not. So we're gonna cycle through here. We've got speed, we've got, again, ignore average fuel efficiency. These things have been sitting around at our dealer lots for a while. So fuel efficiency information, all kinds of stuff, trip A, trip B. Fuel range, 642 right now, 93% for oil life. This is all good stuff. Uh, one thing I don't like about GM system is tire pressure is listed in uh, kilopascals if you have it in set to kilometers. I'd love to be able to set this to PSI. That's what Canadians use for, most of us use for uh, checking tire pressure. Uh, but again, if it's set to metric, it goes fully metric, which it is what it is. Uh, air filter life, you can uh, set that up to be enabled and that kind of thing. Fuel economy, there's your best and your average. Now again, don't worry about the average because some of those have been reset. Uh, you've got a timer in here. You've got battery at 13.7 volts and speed. And you can sometimes add a few more things in here. So this is a very clear display, easy to read uh, with good information information, which I like. And then you have over here, GM system is one of the better ones. Now, again, when I'm filming with a screen, it's going to look like it reflects uh, quite a bit more. You're looking with, you can see my hand there. Uh, you're looking with one eye on the camera instead of two eyes. So while there is some glare in here, I have zero readability issues in person. You may see some of the readability issues on the camera if I hold the camera on the wrong angle here. So don't worry too much about that, but GM system here is very, very good. They've got a lot of things going on. So first of all, you've got AM, FM, you've got Sirius satellite radio. Uh, backup camera is really clear and nice and precise, and you can turn on different uh, guidelines. So if you want the guidelines off, you can have them off. If you want them on, you can have them on, and they're very good um, general guidelines on these GM vehicles. If you're towing a trailer, you can set that up to line up with your trailer hitch. So super simple stuff. You can turn them on or off, whatever way you want. Uh, very good stuff, and it is very clear. Again, it's very difficult to film a screen, uh, but filming the screen, you can see it's very clear. So all of this is good. The thing I like most about it is, um, if I put it in park, there we go. Uh, the thing I like most about it is this is something that allows you to have, let me just see if I can go to it, home. 
allows you to have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but not just Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, you can set it up with wireless Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. And that's a big thing nowadays, because just the same as we have Bluetooth, we hop in the car, we know it'll be on Bluetooth. Uh, you can set this up to right away connect to um, CarPlay so that you have your full CarPlay functionality without getting a cord. And on my car, I don't have that ability, so I always have to dump a cord in there. And um, I like using Apple CarPlay. I think it's super helpful. Uh, sometimes there's times you want to pull up when you don't have it. So no need to plug in the cord here. You can have wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto, uh, and that's just a really nice feature to have uh, nowadays. So again, good services in here. OnStar is one of the best um, digital services in here. You can subscribe to that at any point in your ownership, so that's really helpful as well. It can give you everything from Wi-Fi in the car to, um, oh, I don't know, all kinds of things, safety information, maintenance information. There's a ton of stuff that OnStar does. There is a subscription fee to that, but again, cars are moving to subscription fees. Uh, if you're gonna look at an online system, they are one of the best uh, systems that you have. So lots of stuff in here that we can talk about that we like. And Ooh, camera, let's see what it does for the camera options. Oh, it's just a backup camera, just pulls it up. Okay, I thought it was maybe some options for the camera. Anyway, so you've got things like that. Very good system here, easy to use, quick responding, simple controls right there because everything is pretty much on the dash. Coming down here, oh, let's just, while we're here talk about this glove box button this is a strange thing it's very tesla like there is a um there's no handle on the glove box uh i assume there's a reason for that i guess they decided that it's just fine to hit the button here so again that works totally fine um maybe it's just less to clean i don't know but it is interesting i guess it can offer a little bit more security when the vehicle's locked you can have that locked i suppose uh but then we move down here now this is in the likes and dislikes department if i set my seat a little higher we'll show you what i look like in a second but if i set my seat a little higher I can't quite read the um, 24 degrees that it is currently set to. So this is a dual zone automatic climate system. It does have rump roasters. So you've got the three uh, lights there, right there. So we'll turn it off. I don't need rump roasters today, but uh, uh, seat heaters there, all your climate stuff here, sink, auto, everything's right there. Small buttons for fans. All of this is good, but it's a little confusing because this is how you change the temperature. 27 degrees. 22 to 21 degrees. These are large, it's not super intuitive. Obviously you're gonna figure it out. Um, the only difference is I find that you can't do this with one hand easily. I mean, I guess you can, but it just seems counterintuitive to do it with one hand. So, you know, it's one way to do things. This also can close off just your uh, fans or your vents there, so it is what it is. It's just an interesting uh, design decision to make this larger um, fan system or larger uh, piece here because it is a large piece to adjust your temperature. You can decide if you like it or not. Down here, things that you can like, uh, plus and minus is right there. So you have an automatic transmission, which you can shift through the gears. I believe it's a nine speed transmission on this car. Uh, so again, very good for the towing. And then things I do like. This is GM's super simple system for changing your drive mode. So I won't show you in the dash what it says. I'll just read it to you. Uh, this is a two wheel drive. This is a front wheel drive vehicle right here like this. You switch it over to here and it becomes a four wheel drive and it takes a second to come in and then it's a all wheel drive mode is on. And then the all wheel drive stays on as it goes into the sport mode. This stays on here as it goes into the off road mode and this stays on here as it goes to the towing mode. You don't have to go all the way back. You can continue to rotate back around to two wheel drive. So easy to use. What's interesting is you can lock it in two wheel drive. Sometimes people would wanna do that for fuel efficiency reasons, for driveline wear, that kind of thing. Uh, there's some minor differences, but you have the option to run it in an all wheel drive system or run it in a two wheel drive system every drive mode beyond this is the all-wheel drive system so it's kind of interesting there this is your lane uh, follow type system so it allows you to see lane markers the car to see lane markers to help keep you centered and that will pair with your regular cruise control which is over here uh, like that it has some auto collision warnings like i said it can keep you out of a collision uh, a couple of little things we talked about the headlights they also have the automatic high beam so it can turn on and off by just flapping that button uh, again it's using that camera that we have up here there's a camera out here facing forward that allows itself to see out the window here. So we'll just go wide angle so we can see out the window. It sees the lane markers for you, helps you keep centered. It sees the vehicles in front. So when you have the auto high beams, it can dim and brighten your high beams for you. A lot of things that camera can do. It's uh, fairly common in this class nowadays, but um, you know, it's nice to have it in this vehicle. It's not every vehicle that has it. The other thing that's nice is the rear view mirrors. I don't know if we can see it here. Let's zoom as close as we possibly can. Uh, see the little lines on the outside there? That usually hints towards an auto dimming mirror. You've got your uh, blind spot warning right there, which is that little car in the gray. If I can, there we go. You can see it on the bottom of your screen right there. Um, but then this, the edges of the mirrors have that little bit of a 
tint to it. It's hard to focus on the mirror because it focuses on the thing, but there we go. A little uh, line there is, it does appear to be an auto dimming mirror. Visibility out front, pretty good. You've got the little mirror there or the window there, the mirror set aside, so your pillars aren't huge, pretty good. As you go to the back though, visibility, a little bit compromised on that tiny little window, not a big deal. You've got your backup cameras, so pretty class competitive there. Uh, not Subaru Forester-like, but pretty good. Uh, we'll show you your OnStar while we're here. OnStar button's up there. Uh, you've got your door lights there, and all the lights here, they are LED lights, so that's nice bright white lights. And some of the vehicles that have these forward warning systems don't have the sunglasses holder up there anymore. This one does. So let's just flip our camera around really quickly, show you what it's like from the driver's perspective, and we'll jump outside again. From the driver's environment, this is a pretty comfortable car. This is a tilt and telescopic steering wheel, so it goes up and down and towards me. This is closest to the dash. That's where I often keep it for filming, but I like it a little bit closer to drive, and it does sit nice and close uh, for me for a driving position. You can see here the uh, seat where I have it comfortable gives me tons of headroom, like quite a bit of headroom. So I could certainly move the seat up. I just like it in this area. And again, if I sit too tall, I have trouble seeing the climate uh, number. Uh, but again, that's quite tall. Sitting where I sit, you can see it's got a high belt line here. So other vehicles have that in this class. It's not the only one, but it gives you a bit of a sporty kind of feel, even though you're sitting taller. Uh, you feel like you're sitting in the vehicle. Like I said, it doesn't really affect visibility. Visibility is very good. Uh, but yeah, definitely a sporty feel, which matches that sporty look on the outside. So now let's talk about who this vehicle is for. So when we talk about who this vehicle is for, this one's kind of interesting because a lot of small or mid-sized crossovers, this is more of a mid-sized crossover, a lot of them sort of always have this off-roady kind of angle to them. And this one, it's not really an off-roady kind of angle. This is a 20-inch rim here with decent sidewall, still a 55 series sidewall, but these are Michelin Primacy Tour tires. Those are on-road tires. This is an on-road vehicle with all-wheel drive. So it's an all-weather vehicle, and you may want to put winter tires on if you're in heavy and deep snow, depending on your uh, tastes and that kind of thing. But again, the sporty look matches these sporty tires. Those tires are gonna give you pretty good handling, especially for an for a all-wheel drive, uh, sportier type SUV like this. So you have something that's more along the on-road lines than the off-road lines, but you still have all the practicality. You have these roof rails here, you've got a good sized trunk, you've got great rear seats, it's a five passenger vehicle that gives you the space you need for your, for your passengers. And then what's interesting about this particular trim line is a lot of trim lines in cars, they really just update the wheels, maybe a little bit of chrome in the grill and that kind of thing, or in this case, black in the grill. A lot of time the outside really doesn't have a whole lot of different style between trim lines. It's the inside that you see the difference here. So this one, they go full out on the outside and the inside is not crazy fancy. It's got the cloth seats. There's nothing that really stands out. It hasn't got like a massive screen or anything like that. But what it does have are key pieces. You have your key safety features. You have key technology features, like not just a really clear screen that's quick and snappy and easy to use and works well. It also has wireless Android Auto and wireless Apple CarPlay. So you're staying up with that next generation of stuff. Having OnStar, it's a nice feature to have. You can bring it in when you need it. You can cancel it when you don't need it. Uh, if you eventually, your kids drive this car and you hadn't had OnStar in the past, you could add that on to maybe give them some extra safety margin. This one with the V6 allows you to tow extra weight, which is another nice thing. And not a lot of five passenger vehicles uh, can tow about 4,500 pounds. Again, I'll put the... <laughs> A disclaimer if it's not 4,500 pounds on the screen. So you have something here that is more on-road focused, sporty and fun to drive like a car, gives you that space that you need like an SUV should give you, has decent technology, and you're not paying for a whole bunch of interior technologies you wouldn't need while still getting good technology. This is a pretty cool car, and for the right person, I think it makes a ton of sense. If you need something a little bit more off-roady, there will be different options. If you find that this style may be compromising, it's really not that bad. So overall, they do a really good job. The only thing I don't like is the way the sliding rear seats give that gap in there, but again, if I'm sliding those rear seats forward, I'm usually just pushing that big box in. I'm not filling it with like my groceries to move that thing forward. So overall, pretty good vehicle with that bigger engine option really impressive to me. So let me know what you think of this. If you own one, tell me what, you, what your ownership experience is like. And if you have questions about this vehicle or any vehicle in its class, make sure you let me know in the comments below because I can compare this vehicle to other vehicles in its class here at Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals. If you wanna see this vehicle, make sure you swing by to Jim Gilbert's Wheels and Deals in Fredericton, New Brunswick and check it out for yourself. Thanks everybody for watching.